The next speaker is uh, Prof Professor Peter Little, who is the Head of School of Pharmacy. Uh, relatively new, been here just over a year and uh, has been a very welcome addition to the University of Queensland. And through him, I've re-engaged with uh, School of Pharmacy and um, have had a lot of joy in doing so. Peter's going to be talking to us about the Centre for Translational Anti-Infective Pharmacodynamics, which essentially hosts this in vitro infection model technology, which is going to provide us with a lot of the data from which we base our dosing regimens on for future studies. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Jason. It's a pleasure and an honour to have an opportunity to speak today. And I want to specifically congratulate Jason and Jeff on the successful uh, establishment of the CRE Reduce Centre. This is quite clearly one of the biggest issues in uh, current human health. I have an appointment and spend a lot of time in China and it's been interesting. I can read the English language newspapers and everybody used to rock up to the hospitals in Guangzhou with any sort of thing and all the medicines through the hospital, they don't have community pharmacy and they, they'd get put on a drip. And uh, we might think from some of the things that China's behind, they've actually just banned that practice. It's not acceptable anymore. So they're also thinking about these issues around the world. And in fact, we're hoping to have a conference in this area in Guangzhou next May that Jason and I are organising. My personal area of, of research, research is the cardiovascular complications of diabetes. So I feel quite like a fish out of water scientifically here today, although I'm enjoying everything that I'm hearing. But with my hat as the head of the School of Pharmacy at the University of Queensland, I came to know when I came here last June that Jason Roberts had a, an appointment in my school as well as an appointment in the Faculty of Medicine and also at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. So I quickly got to know Jason and we discussed the possibilities for, for what could we could be done. And then that led on to the need and the possibility of having a centre, which we called the Centre for the Translational uh, Anti-Infective Pharmacodynamics. I've lost a word. Which I call the otherwise known as the Centre for the Safe and Effective Use of, of Antibiotics. It's a bit of a mouthful for many of the people that I have to interact with. So the School of Pharmacy, I can make a plug, if you don't mind, for two slides. So, of course, uh, beautiful Brisbane, my new home and the university and the pharmacy school, the Pharmacy Australia Centre of Excellence, just across this no-car bridge, a beautiful building here on the edge of the Princess Alexandra Hospital and lots of people like to give us their memorabilia. Uh, pharmacy, if I may, is ranked a couple of years ago, 33 in the world, and it's the even at 33 in the world, that puts us as the third pharmacy school in Australia. So pharmacy and pharmacology is extremely strong in Australia. We pretty much have an international pharmacy school with 28% of our students coming from 14 different countries and a big focus on research producing almost 150 papers from a fairly modest-sized school, I may say. Um, what I've uh, done is, is organised and we had uh, the conclusion. This week we had a school review, UQ review, reviews at school every seven years and so I ran into that in my first year and so we got things organised for the structure of our research. So I inherited four themes, pharmacometrics, pharmacy education, the quality use of medicines and therapeutic targeting, obvious themes for a pharmacy school. I was able to join some other UQ colleagues in the Centre for Cardiac and Vascular Biology, and then we have a Centre for Pain Research with Irina Vetter, Marie Smith and Pete Cabot, and my faculty is in the process with the business faculty of establishing a Centre for the Business and Economics of Health. But onto this, I negotiated with Jason, and we established the School Centre for the Translational Anti-Infective Pharmacodynamics. We've had terrific support both from my faculty and specifically the executive dean, uh, Professor Bruce Abernathy, and you can, if you're lucky, and we have been, get some faculty level funding as well as school funding to support the establishment of this centre. And today I'm going to show you how that fits into the plans of Jason and Jeff. And so we, we need these things. Pharmacy schools need centres, so we're extremely delighted that they gave us the opportunity 
to establish this centre. So all the clinical work obviously occurs in hospitals and mostly this particular hospital, but the backup work, and I think that was some of the data that Jeff showed, will it, is occurring now at the Pharmacy Australia Centre of Excellence. Um, I have to explain this and what we're doing sometimes, and so I'm, I'm embarrassed sitting here or standing here with all of the world experts, but it's as simple as the fact that, as we've seen today, that if there are factors of, of biology and pathology that lead to a low concentration of antibiotics in the blood of sick patients, the, the microorganisms develop resistance and the patients die. If you want and overdose the patients accidentally or deliberately, many of these agents are toxic to organs and the patients will die from the toxicity. The aim of the exercise is to get real data, real blood level data, and to do the modelling for which Jason and Jeff are world famous, to model down through groups of patients to an individual patients to get what one might call the Goldilocks concentration so the patient receives the correct dose of the required antibiotics. It's not just one anymore, it's multiple antibiotics. So you prevent the development of resistance and save the patients, the optimum outcome. And it looks like this. So this is a combination of, of in vitro pharmacodynamic investigations, pharmacometric analysis, so this is all the, the modelling that gets done, and then the pharmacokinetics, so the interactions between the drug and the patient and then the analysis to produce novel dosing regimes. So this is all about using science and then mathematics to produce an understanding of the absorption and the elimination of a range of drugs to get optimum dosing in different patient classes. Then we get technical. So the equipment is called a hollow fibre infection model. It looks like this and it's got a dosing port and in cartoon style here, there are liquids that, that mimic blood essentially that can flow through these tubes and there are bacteria that are growing around these tubes. Or we even saw this morning that that might even be fungus, anything that you like. So this is what the model looks like. It's worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars and it's set up in my school. And so you can see here dosing port and here's the pump. So this works around like this. And what it looks like in real life is here set up in a controlled temperature environment. And Jason uh, has done incredibly well and we've been able to fund, or he has been able to fund Dr. Ficardi Syme, who's a research fellow and a lecturer in translational pharmacodynamics in the School of Pharmacy. So this is Ficardi here, and he is driving this equipment. So that's what's happening, and it started, and we're delighted about it. One slide, what's this all about? So you can get a large... What does this, this hollow fibre equipment do? You get a large number of organisms can be tested, revealing resistance, and we've seen some examples earlier in the day. It precisely simulates human pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So Jeff's face with the patients who have what they've got, in this model, you have some control over altering those parameters yourself. Rep repetitive sampling over time, both the drugs and the organism. The total kill can be determined. All things that you can't do in a patient whom your major interest is keeping them alive. Different drug models can be tested at the same time and you've got a dosing curve plus an elimination curve. You can tweak the model to get the results that you want. You can look at bacteria in different growth phases, early phases, rapid phases and then plateau phases of growth. It says here antiviral viral pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics and presumably antifungal as well. So there's lots of, of technical, clinical, scientific advantages of this particular equipment. Uh, that's all I wanted to say and thank you very much, Jason, for the opportunity.